Welcome back to the Legacy class from Hillsborough Bible Baptist Church in Hillsborough, Ohio. We're, we're glad you're watching. Thank you for tuning back in. This is our second week of broadcasting from home. And, uh, and I've told some of you as we've talked, it's a little different. It's, a, it's an adjustment, but it's an adjustment that we have to make. We're being very careful. I uh, bring a greeting to you from our pastor at, at the Hillsborough Bible Baptist Church. But you know, we want to take every precaution necessary to keep everybody healthy and safe. And so a result of that is we're studying from home. And uh, you, can, you can study as well. Last week we studied Psalms chapter 27. And it was a lesson of, of hope and a time of turmoil. And I think that kind of describes where we're at in the United States of America and in the world with the uh, coronavirus and all that's happening with that. And I trust that you're well and we're praying for you. And uh, this week we're going to continue on. We're going to go right through chapter 27 and go into Psalms chapter 28 if you want to find your way in your Bible. To Psalms chapter 28. We, uh, in our class at church, we've been studying prophecy. And I think at this point in time, I've decided that we're going to reconvene that study when we do get back to church. We'll pick up prophecy then. And for those of you that uh, enjoy prophecy and there's much to be learned from prophecy, we're going to continue back into the study of Revelation. And it's been a, it's been a, a good study. I enjoy the study. Revelation in itself is sometimes intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. What we're doing is we're going to dip our toe in the water of Revelation, and then we're coming back out and applying things that are happening all around us into the prophecy of today, tying it back into Revelation, and, and making it a, a chance to learn what the book has to teach us. It's a practical application of reading Revelation as we see the things today in the world happening all around us. So maybe you can tune in, or maybe you can come and be a part when we, when we reconvene that study sometime very, very soon. And just by the way, in relation to prophecy, big, biblical prophets have always been 100% accurate in their prophecy. 100% accuracy. So when we study prophecy and we use this Bible that we've been given, you can take great confidence that God has provided us a roadmap and, and a book to live by. And so it's a wonderful book to study. Before we get into our lesson, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that we can open your book freely. And Father, we pray for those that are dealing with health issues, that are dealing with work issues, that are struggling in many ways. But uh, we know that we can count on you, Father. We know we can pray and you hear our prayers. And Father, we ask that you bless this lesson today as we study. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, amen. Let's get into Psalms chapter 28. It, uh, last week our lesson was a psalm of David about hope. And Psalm 28 is a, is a prayer of David again, but it's a prayer for God's help. You know, it's a very natural psalm as a follow-up to chapter 27. It follows that message of hope. And, and here we, we read and we study David, a plea for help and strength. Now, David is referring in this text as we read to the wicked and the wicked around him and the wicked in his life and his plea for God to help him as he deals with the wicked. And your plea for help may take on a different different shape or a different form. It may be, it may be a plea that's about your heart. It may be a plea for someone you love, a plea for something in your life. It may be a, a plea for clarity. Maybe you're trying to seek the truth and what what it means to know uh, Jesus Christ is your Savior. So your plea can be very real and very natural. So as we read, let's go to Psalms chapter 28, and I'll start with verse number 1. And it says, Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock, be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward the holy oracle. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to their wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands, render to them their desert. Because they re regard not 
the works of the Lord, nor the operations of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. Key verses here as we finish out this chapter. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I'm helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people and bless their, thine inheritance. Feed them also, and lift them up forever. Boy, a lot of strength in those verses, and, and you'll find that with Psalm as we study Psalms a long time. There's a lot of strength, a lot of wisdom, and that's by design. I want you to think about a time that you had to go ask someone for help, uh, or you had something that you, that you were had to go talk to someone about, or you had to go ask for something, or there was something that you had to deal with and, and you were stressed out about it or you were concerned about it because you needed help. And in our own nature, by the way that we're built many times, asking for help is not a natural thing to do because we tend to want to be uh, supermen. We want to be all dependent. We want to be able to do it all. We want to We want to do it on our own. We can stand on our own two feet and to go ask for help Many times we, we would make, make that to feel like we're weak. And, and I want to tell you that, that, that you're not. Uh, asking for help can many times be a wonderful two-way street. The person that you ask for help will oftentimes grow and gladly help. And the person that's receiving the help often grows in the relationship as we ask for help. And, and that's by God's design, too. When we think about these verses and we look at Psalms chapter 28, it says, Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. And he goes on to say, Be not silent to me. And, and that's, that's an interesting set of words right there. Why would David say, Be not silent to me? Sometimes as you read this Bible, you've got to stop and you've got to take the words and you've got to think about them. And you know, sometimes when we go and we ask those questions of people, and we've got something that we want to deal with, Sometimes we get answers that we just don't like. You know, we get answers we don't want, right? It happens. The answers may not be what we want. They may be the truth. They may be something that we need to hear. But many times we get answers that we really don't want, and, and that's just the way it is. But the other part about that is, is sometimes when we ask questions, one of the worst things for us is when we don't get any answer is when there's silence, when there's quietness about things after we ask our question. And here we have David showing us an example. By his plea, he said, unto thee will I cry. Now, to cry means that he is more than just casually asking. He's, he's pleading. He's crying out to the Lord. And, and then he says, please don't be silent to me. Um, talk to me. Talk to me. You know, verse 1 and 2 goes on to say there may be times when it seems God has closed his ear. And, and maybe in this time and with everything that's going on in, in, in your life and, and sometimes in, in our lives, there are times when it seems that God has closed his ear. Let me assure you that's not so. Uh, maybe with our health crisis, uh, it may seem that way, but he hasn't. God hears every word that you say. So don't get discouraged. Continue to pray. That doesn't mean we close our mouths. If God is not obvious in his communication back with us, and we're not obviously seeing the results of our prayers, and we're not obviously having things answered the way we think they should be, that doesn't mean that you close your mouths and, and go on about things and stop praying and doing it on your own. David does not want God to stop talking, but I promise you, I, if we quit talking to God, we won't hear what God has to say. And as I, and I, uh, the expression of seriousness of David's voice is the cry. It means for us to be earnest in our pleas, to be constant and to be sincere. And surely that's what David is trying to exam show us an example here. But we certainly don't want God to, to, to uh, stop talking. We want to continue to hear. And that requires us to be earnest and constant, sincere, in our prayers and our communications with him. 
You know, it is a dreadful thing to imagine that the Lord would ever become silent to our prayers. I, I, would, I would not want to think about that. I, I want God, I want to know. The Bible tells us that God is always hearing our prayers and is always wanting to hear what we have to say. And it's obvious here that David did not want that to happen and neither should we. So I'm telling you in the midst of everything, last week we talked about hope. This week, week we're going to talk in the end about strength. There is hope and strength in communication with the Lord in all that we're dealing with, where, whether it be a coronavirus or, or something else in your life that's really, really uh, throwing you for a loop. David didn't want the Lord to stop talking, and neither should we. He turned that thought into a plea, teaching us to pray, to reason, to believe, and to not stop. It just It's something we should not stop doing. Continue to talk. Verse 2. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward the holy oracle. You can, you can just sense the urgency and the, the, the plea of David as he lifts up his hands. He's eager to hear back from God in all of this. And, and we should be as well. And, and I would encourage you to do that. The verse, verses 3 through 5. Draw me not away with the wicked. Well, we don't want to be, we don't want to be with that. These verses are uh, verses of caution, I would say, in my mind. They're verses that very much throw a caution flag up for us. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors. They'll go to their neighbors and say one thing, but when we look down deep and we see what's in their hearts, mischief is in their hearts. They're up to something. They're not straight up in what they're saying. And David says, I don't want to be a part of that. And neither should we. But in times of struggle and strife in our life, we can tend to look for places and answers and things that we shouldn't. And God warns us here. And it says in verse 4, David says, Give them according to their deeds and according to their wickedness after their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands. Render to them their desert. Because they regard not the works of the Lord nor the operations of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. And we want to be built up. In different difficult times, we can resort to other methods of dealing with adversity. And I would caution, don't do that. Look for truth. Look for strength. Look for strength in the Lord. Look for strength in each other. I kind of put in these verses a... a, a a subtitle of pick your battles. You got to be sure the battles you're picking, make sure they're battles you really want to fight, make sure they're really a great way to look for an answer and look for comfort. And Christ is always there for that and will never fail you. Accept Christ and the workers of iniquity become a job for you and the Lord together. You, you form your team, you take on the battles, and you move on. Verses 6 through 8. Excuse me, verses 6 through 8. Blessed be the Lord, because he's heard the voice of my supplications. You know, supplication is a call for help. Uh, it's a call for help from God. When we, when we read the word supplication, it's a call for help from God, asking for something earnestly or humbly. And, and it says here, blessed be the Lord, because he's heard the voice of my supplications, my call for help, my earnest and humble plea. Verse 7, the Lord is my strength. That's our word for today, strength. And my shield, my heart trusteth in him. I am helped, therefore my heart greatly, greatly rejoiceth. And with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength. He is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. Strong words of encouragement. Do we understand all that's going on around us right now? Absolutely not. We don't. Do we try to understand? We, we watch the news. We read. We talk to each other. We've made adjustments in our lives. We're doing things different. We're shopping different. We're taking, washing our hands different than we ever have. But do we completely understand? No. Do we tend to worry? Well, sometimes we kind of do, and worry is a thing in, in our human nature. 
and but the Bible cautions us against that. And I, at this point in this message, I, I do want to talk to you a little bit about worry. When we think about worry, Philippians has some very good words about worry. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. It says, be careful for nothing. Uh, be anxious for nothing. Worry for nothing. This is the Bible. This is, this is the words of our Lord speaking to us. Be careful for nothing. When Paul penned this and he got those words, it says, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. There's that word supplication again. Asking, pleading of God. But by prayer, number one, and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Don't worry about anything. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Can I encourage you not to worry? It, it, I know it's hard not to do. I, I know all of us have a certain amount of that built in us. But God tries to teach us through these trials and tribulations to trust, to be a trusting and to lean on him. And, and some have said, well, God won't give us any more than, than we can handle. Yeah, you'll end up with more than you can handle. But God desires of you is that you talk to him and let him help you handle what it is you've got to handle, and you handle it together. And that's through times like we have today as well. So the key word in the verse as we go back to Psalms chapter 28 is strength. You know, we all like to remember the strength of our youth. I know back when I was young, uh, younger, uh, baling hay and, and square baling and baling straw and working on the farm and all that we did that, that required the strength, the strength of our youth. But the strength that we're talking about here is a mental strength, a spiritual strength that comes from a relationship. The Bible mentions over 360 times the word strength. And so when that happens, you should take note and, and make reference to that. In the Bible, strength is often linked to God's power. And we all need that. And you know, Ephesians 6.10 talks about, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's where the real strength comes from in the power of the Lord. So in times like these, we, we try to understand the situation around us. We do the best that we can. But I think in all this, I think you would agree that we have all learned how quickly things can change and how little control we have in the big picture. We've learned how quickly things can change and how little control we really, really have. And, and I, think, I think that you would agree with that. I, I think you've seen it happen. You, you've, uh, you, one week things were as normal. The next week the shelves of the grocery stores were cleared off. Things can change. We need hope of last week's message and we need the strength of this week's message. According to the Bible, what strength we have is not our own. Now, we talked before about strength, and we talked about the fact that we want to be standing on our own two feet and getting it done ourselves and getting everything handled on our own. But the Bible is very, very clear that any strength that you have is not of your own. Uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24, uh, says that, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory is this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercises loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. You know, there's two types of power mentioned there. There's two types of power mentioned there. Uh, one is positional and one is physical. Strength. Don't boast of your strength. Don't boast of your wisdom. And remain humble in all that you do. But at the end of, at the end of that verse it says, I am a loving kindness and judgment and righteous in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Don't, don't be boastful. Don't be... Don't be proud of your strength. Don't be uh, 
boastful in your, in your riches or your wisdom, but in all these things remain humble. And when we recognize we are weak, only then can we really become strong. And I think if you've ever been through a trial in life, if you've ever been a situation in a situation yourself, or maybe in a situation with a loved one, and you've ever uh, hit that bump in the road, or you've gone through a difficult time, and, and you've become very, very weak, I think only then do you realize how strong you can be. That when we become weak, then we become strong. So as we close this lesson this week, uh, I guess I would ask you, are you looking for strength? The Lord gives his children strength to minister to each other. The Bible places emphasis on God's strength in our salvation. And there's that word again. That, we used that word last week, and that, that's that word of salvation. And, and as we described last week, many times we hear that word, but what does it really mean? What are we actually saved from? And we're saved from eternal damnation. And it's not an, a difficult proposition. You ask Christ into your heart, you trust in the Lord, and you make that part of your very being, your very, very, very fiber, and the Holy Spirit dwells in you from that point in your life. But that's something you have to do. I can't do it for you. Nobody else can do it for you. You've got to decide to take that step. You've got to, you've got to tap into the strength of the Lord, and you've got to make it eternal, and you've got to make it forever. So do you really have that settled? I would ask you that. As we look around us and we deal with all that's going on, do you really have that settled? Really have it settled? And, and do you have it settled in your heart? Not just by saying, yeah, I believe in God, yeah, I'm a good person, and yeah, I've always done things the best I can, but I'm asking, have you really been submissive to the point and get it settled? And I would leave you with that thought today. And, and if you don't, uh, reach out, reach out. To, to anybody at, at, at Hillsborough Bible Baptist Church or myself, and uh, would love to talk to you. Our strength is, is, is found in Christ. I can do all things to Christ which strengtheneth me. And we've read that in Philippians. It's a very, very well-known verse as we study and grow in the Lord. But I would also leave you with the fact that our strength comes in surrender. Those who rely on God's strength from day to day will find in Him a great source of energy that's always there. Those who rely on God's strength from day to day will find in him a great source of energy that's always there. Doesn't come, doesn't go. If you make it a part of who you are, you will find that it's always there. Hope and strength. It's, uh, it's, it's a wonderful message. Uh, this is a great book. And I, I would pray for you that uh, this week would find you in good health. And uh, Lord, and that the Lord would bless you and your family. And uh, and if things don't change, we'll be back again next week. We'll be doing the same thing. We'll pick up another study. And I, I'll continue to pray for you. And I thank you so much. God bless you, and have a great day.